Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to deploy a Springboard app on a digital ocean Ubuntu server manually. These instructions can be used to deploy any Springboard application on any Ubuntu server. This is usually helpful in environments or cases where CI, CD or continuous integration and continuous delivery is not available. In my folder, I have three files that we are going to upload to the server. <coughs> the first file is the api.jar file. This is the final jar file generated by building your project using any of the build tools such as Maven or SBT. We also have the spring uh, configuration file that we can use to configure uh, the port or the database settings. And we also have a batch script that will allow us to be able to run our application. In my folder, we have three files that we are going to copy to the server. The first file is the api.jar. This final jar file is normally generated by building a project using any of the build tools, such as Maven or SBT. The second file we have is app uh, properties. So this file is what we will use to load uh, the Spring application properties such as uh, the database connection settings and even the port configurations. And the third file will contain our startup script that allows us to start our application. Currently this is what our app conf properties we've defined our database connections string and uh, credentials. We also specify the port that our application will be running on. And then you can also make configuration on some of the JPA and Hibernate settings. Our startup script will contain the command for running our application. The jar file here, this is the name of the final build file that we are going to deploy on the server. This command also tells Spring, tells Spring on where to load the configuration file from instead of using the embedded application.properties that is usually contained in the resources package. And uh, this one ensures that uh, no app command does not output any no app.out file. And the and at the end ensures that this runs in the background. To copy the files, I'm going to copy my, to point my terminal to the folder so that I should be able to send them to the server. So to copy your files to the server, you can either, either use uh, different tools that you are comfortable. Uh, the most common tool is the SCP command from the terminal, or you can also use the graphical user interface tool like uh, NC, WinSCP or FileZilla. Using the SCP command, I'm going to copy my files. So I'll do the SCP command. So you'll be required to enter the credentials for your remote server. Once your files have been copied, we log into the server and confirm that the files are already there. Once we log into our server, we can confirm if the files have been moved by running an ls command and we can see that we have all the files there. And we can try to run our application by running the start script. So we can see that it doesn't have enough permissions. So we'll give it an executable permission. So we'll try to run our application by running this command. Then I'll go ahead and tail the logs to just make sure that the application has started successfully. So if the configuration is correct, then the, your application will get started and you can see that it was started successfully. So I'll go ahead and test the API to make sure that we are getting the correct response. When we send a request to our API, we should get a successful response. And you can see that we are getting a successful response here. Yeah. 